this evening uh, we have uh, one item on the on the regular planning board agenda under new business and at the end of uh, that item uh, we will be going into workshop session uh, to discuss uh, zoning ordinance issues uh, with that um, first item on this evening's agenda is the review of the uh, minutes of the meeting of August 15th any of the board members have any comments corrections or notes regarding those minutes I see a motion move to accept the minutes as written second second all those in favor okay by raising your right hand thank you uh, I have a fairly lengthy list of uh, correspondence on tonight's agenda first item is a planning board recommendation regarding the coal uh, zoning amendment this uh, went before the town council at their last meeting and uh, I made a brief presentation and just recommended to the council those recommendations that the planning board had discussed in workshop and passed at its regular meeting and uh, one of the issues that was um, made clear was that this was the second time that we had supported the state recommended recommended setback uh, and that essentially was what uh, our proposal was at this time the town council has rever re referred it to their zoning uh, subcommittee ordinance subcommittee and I believe it's on the October it will be on the October regular October meeting of the town council uh, next item is a letter to Steve Moore uh, or a memorandum uh, from Ernie McVean, I'm sorry, to Steve Moore regarding the Highland subdivision. Next item is a memorandum to Mike McGovern, the town manager from Maureen O'Meara, the town planner regarding the Highland subdivision amendment. Remember at our uh, workshop meeting we'd asked Maureen to get in touch with the town manager and uh, see if there were any issues outstanding from the town side uh, that the board should be aware of before considering that application any further. We have a letter from Jack Lilly regarding the shorelands, uh, the Highland subdivision, uh, particularly with respect to uh, second means of access. A very informative newsletter from the Department of Environmental T Protection regarding uh, shoreland zoning uh, news. Uh, changes in their wetland regulations. Uh, they have a tier one, tier two uh, wetlands review now, uh, but it all somehow gets drawn back into a fairly lengthy review if you meet the criteria of being within 250 feet of a coastal wetland or within 25 feet of a river, which a great many of wetlands tend to be, certainly in this community. An interesting uh, article uh, regarding uh, the Falmouth housing growth uh, continues, continues unabated. Uh, I guess this is similar to Cape Elizabeth's situation uh, if we had more developable land from the standpoint that many communities have growth areas designated and they continue to zone all of the rest of developable areas uh, as residential lots so you have simultaneous uh, growth areas you have those that are already designated as residential areas or commercial as well as the areas specifically referenced in the comprehensive plan for growth um, Smart planning article. Where, which one is that? Well, in any event, we have a smart planning article that I can't seem to put my hands on right now. Any other uh, correspondence from <coughs> other board members? Okay, thank you. That gets us uh, to tonight's. Uh, first item and last item under new business, the Fitzpatrick Wetland Alteration Permit slash Public Access Waiver. That sounds familiar for some reason. <laughs> I, see, I see you've uh, dropped a member of your staff. Uh, <laughs> Good evening, board uh, members. Just, just a minute. Before you uh, get started, I'd like to have Maureen give us a brief uh, introduction into the application, and, and we'll move ahead from there. Thank you. Uh, Joe Fitzpatrick came to the planning board and uh, requested approval for two lots off of Scott Dyer Road. He needed a wetlands alteration permit and public access waiver. The board granted those approvals last month. Um, at the same time, there was an issue raised about whether or not the easterly property boundary was properly located. The abutter uh, had disputed whether, whether that property line was appropriate. The board at the time said there was a stamp survey and that they would not get involved in, in a dispute 
on the location. Uh, the applicant has come back this month um, in an effort to uh, resolve the dispute without having to go to court. He's, he's, he's revised the plan so that all of the development proposed is outside of the disputed area. Um, and I, I believe the development's representative is here tonight to go over the changes that are included in the new plan. Okay. Uh, before he does that, I guess the uh, board has to make a motion with respect to a reconsideration of this item. Yes. Uh, does anyone? So moved. So moved. Let's have a second. Second. All those in favor? Okay. Passes unanimously. Uh, now that we have uh, um, passed a motion to reconsider the item, uh, would the applicant please introduce himself and uh, give us a general introduction and overview of the changes to the plan since uh, the plan was approved. Good evening, board members. Uh, my name is James Seymour. I'm a civil engineer at Sebago Technics. Uh, tonight, I'm here in place of Owens. He had some prior commitments and couldn't make the meeting. Uh, the project is a parcel uh, owned by Grenville Jordan, located on Scott Dyer Road. Um, since the last meeting, there have been a few changes. Um, there's been a dispute over the property line, as you are well aware of, and to avoid uh, uh, possible civil action, the applicant has decided to uh, realign the road so not to uh, impact that area, which may be in dispute. Uh, the road has shifted over, and basically the site has become a little more scrunched. Uh, the test pits, because of the test pits on this particular lot, the house cannot move much further this way. Uh, the road has moved over slightly and has been a little bit less lawn area here. There's a minimal buffer of 8 feet. It does widen out to 22 or 23 feet near the entrance. Um, other than those changes, uh, we, there are no major changes to the plan. Uh, we just ask for reconsideration of the approval uh, to avoid any kind of complication with this landing dispute. Okay, thank you. Any questions of board? Comments? I'll, I'll back up just a couple of, of meetings uh, with respect to the buffer. Um, there had been some discussion about uh, changing the uh, from all evergreen material to some uh, deciduous trees like red maples. Uh, I believe you have, uh, what do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, arborvitae. I think it would be appropriate to have perhaps the three of those toward the front of the property as, as a uh, red maple, which would grow in the wet soils and, and would provide a more of a mixed and naturalized uh, type of growth there. And probably, uh, I don't like, the ordinance doesn't give a particular caliper, and obviously the larger the tree, the more expensive it is, but something in the one and a half to two inch range I think would be appropriate to the project's budget and the uh, something that's going to have some presence and last for a while, something that might sustain the impact of a plow. You're talking about diameter? Diameter, which is measured about <clears throat> six inches above the base of the tree. Um, Mr. Chair, we, we do have in the ordinance a tree, um, a tree appendix that lists trees and minimum Widths, and if you wanted to refer to that, that would give the applicant okay. guidance. And that okay, would why, don't we, why don't we do that then? If you have any questions, Maureen, I don't have the ordinance in front of me, but Maureen can refu refer you to that section. Uh, what was the number again you'd be looking for? Uh, four. Four. Mr. Chair? Yes. I don't know whether this was just a, a non-technical uh, approach or not, but you mentioned the changes that you mentioned, and then you said there were no more substantial changes or whatever. I guess I'd like to know what other changes there are. Uh, other than, uh, you know, we had to do some different regrading here because of the, uh, I should say, squeezing of the lot. Uh, these are now three to one. Before, there was a little bit larger area out here in the lawn. Uh, before dipping into a ditch, it was just simple grading. That was all the only difference to comply due to the uh, decrease in space. Everything is into the town, and it has been reviewed by the engineering staff. Thank you. I have any other items? I, I hate to do this. Uh, I have a recollection that we had some lengthy discussions about overhead telephone and electric. Yes. 
that it was going to be underground at least to the first house <coughs> and this plan shows it overhead again that's right is that is that something that an oversight on the plan or is that something that uh, has changed since our maybe that was two meetings ago perhaps that that was discussed It was on the approved plan as overhead? The approved plan. It must be an oversight thing, because we are planning to put underground to one pole. Uh, it's just to the second lot where we're uh, hopefully leave that up to the, the people who purchased the property. You, I'm sorry, you said that it was going to be underground or overhead to the first lot? Underground? It's going to be, uh, excuse me, it's going to be over, it's going to be Excuse me, I said that wrong. It's going to be overhead to the first lot and then underground. We're hoping to have one pole and then servicing both lots from that one pole. And it would be, I, I, we haven't really decided whether we're going to go above ground or underground to the second lot because I would like to leave that up to the, yeah. to the purchaser of the, of the uh, property. Uh, does anyone else, uh, certainly uh, Ms. McKay seems to have a similar recollection <laughs> that I have. Yes, my, my recollection when we talked about this, and I do believe it was about two meetings ago at least, that you, I thought, had agreed to take it underground to the first house and then to leave it up to the purchaser of the back house, so to speak, as to whether or not they would pay for something that would be an extension to their house but the idea would be that if it were underground to start with that would be an incentive to have it be underground the whole way Is there, it, that's my there, recollection yeah, my was recollection was that there was a discussion about looking down the driveway and seeing the power running diagonally across the driveway which was a fairly straight shot down down the, the property I right we may have overlooked that at the last meeting there must be some confusion because I'm, I'm not, I, I don't uh, really recollect it. it uh, I really wasn't planning to do underground utilities for both these properties. No, it was only for the first house. That was my recollection. And then it that, would be... Hmm? For this front property? For the front house, that's correct. And then it would be the discretion of the second homeowner. Is that the way Conduit is there for the yeah. potential underground yeah. service. That was one that was. Uh, okay. Perhaps what we can do then is leave that an issue of uh, a condition of approval uh, from the standpoint that I think what we would need to do is go through the meeting notes and it seems as though that came up during a workshop and it was my understanding that that, that was going to happen because of the impact that the overhead power would have on that driveway looking down the driveway. It was either that or it was going to go to a riser pole that was located in such a way that one wouldn't have to go diagonally across the driveway. That's, Mark? That was my, rec my recollection as far as one pole, and we were going to uh, go overhead from that one pole to this property here and then underground here. Uh, I, yeah. Unless there was a mix up with uh, Sebago Tech as far as yeah, they had drawn it. Mark? I, I remember a, a distinct uh, diagonal service to the residents cutting across the driveway, which I think was because the telephone pole was at one point in time on the opposite side of the driveway before the driveway moved further up the sheet. And that was something that I know we objected uh -huh. to and, and has gone That's from true. this plan. And the overhead is coming in from the street to the first pole, sort of over the dry, over at the over the curb cut, and and as you look down the driveway, it doesn't cut across the driveway anymore. I think that was the looks like what's happening. Well, the main service does it. It goes diagonally down the driveway, across the driveway, and then overhead. Yeah. Yeah, across there, and then and it also went over there. I, I believe it is a typical policy of CMP that okay. they will go overhead to the first house on a lot and will go underground. I think it's only in very rare conditions do they go underground and come back up to go overhead. Right. So it would make sense that this ground would be served by overhead, 
uh, to a pole located approximately here, and then it would go underground, underground from that location. Okay. Or to a to maybe possibly two overhead, then go underground to. That's what. Yeah, I I think I, it would be appropriate then to sh to note on the overhead service to the second house that that may be underground at the option of the uh, home buyer. That's the way I. Okay. Everyone's heart racing now. <laughs> uh, any other questions, comments? I have a motion. Uh, yes. Ms. McKay? Excuse me. I beg your pardon. If someone else wants to make a motion instead, I'd be more than happy to. Mr. Parkers. <clears throat> motion for the board to consider a. Um, I'm Sorry. Motion for approval. Um, findings of fact. Number one, Joel Fitzpatrick is requesting reconsideration of public access waiver and wetland alteration permit approvals granted by the Planning Board on August 15, 1995 for two lots located off Scott Dyer Road in order to resolve a boundary dispute. Number two, the plan shifts the road west away from the property line but is otherwise very similar to the previous plan approved by the Board. Number three, the plan substantially complies with section 19-4-2B public access waiver and section 19-3-9 wetland, wetlands alteration permit. Therefore, be it ordered that based on the plans and materials submitted and the facts presented, the application of Joel Fitzpatrick for a public access waiver and wetlands alteration permit for two lots located off Scott Dyer Road be approved with the following condition. Number one, that the plans be revised as specified in the town engineer's letter dated 9-12-95. You want to add something about the trees? Um, number two, that the plan or the, the tree planting um, notes on the plan be uh, altered um, to reflect the um, Reflect the uh, discussion this evening. Yeah, so that was planting four red maples at an inch yeah, and a half caliper, or as recommended in the ordinance. Okay, to reflect planting of four red maples um, as per ordinance. Mm -hmm. And those were to replace the four arborvitae? Four, arbor, four of the Close, arborvitae closest, closest to, to the road. That's correct. And there's a third condition. That the, uh, that the power, electric power, revised, that the plans be revised to reflect the electric service to the rear of the lot may be underground. As an option to the uh, purchaser. I second the motion. Okay, second. Before we have a vote, I again for the record, I see that the abutters are here. Uh, this pro project has already gone through a public hearing. I don't think there's anything substantive in tonight's meeting that affects the public. I think, if anything, there's less impact on the public than there may have been in the past. So I don't see any need to reopen the public hearing. Do, does the board agree with that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. OK, we have a vote on the motion that's amended. All those in favor, indicate by raising your right hand. All right, passes unanimously. Thank you. That's the last item on this evening's agenda, regular planning board meeting agenda. Uh, is there any further discussion? A motion for adjournment? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Thank you. President We're adjourned.
We're moving to another room. Are we going to move into another room? Yes, yeah, we're going into the conference room. I should have mentioned, we're going to the back conference room. 